Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation of the right way to trade tops and bottoms. Welcome, my name is Stephen Primo. I am the president and founder of Specialist Trading and thank you for joining us today in this collaboration uh, webinar series. I am the president and founder of Specialist Trading and we are first and foremost an educational company. Uh, we provide all of our students and members with the tips, techniques and strategies that I've accumulated in my 37 year career and we empower them with them so that they can make their own trading decisions. Now, I've been trading, as I just stated, for a total of 37 years, and I first started on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange. I was on the trading floor for a total of 16 years, and nine of those years I was a specialist for Donaldson, Lufkin, and Genrette. Uh, I left the floor in the mid-90s to manage money, to pursue my own trading account, and around seven years ago, I started just teaching and mentoring students my own trading strategies and my own trading techniques. So that's when I started specialist trading. Now, I'm going to show you a great technique that you can start using as early as tomorrow. This is an entry technique that you can apply to any strategy. You can apply to any trading method you currently have. It's not a full-fledged strategy but I'll share with you a way in which to, to start trading one of our full-fledged strategies very soon. Now before we begin, as always, I ask that you please take a moment to view our disclaimer. I'm going to show you a lot of performance results using this entry technique, but please remember that we can in no way guarantee that any of the results I'm about to share with you will be repeated in the future. I would also like to uh, invite each and every one of you to follow us on Twitter. There's our abbreviated uh, handle right there, at SPCLST. T-R-A-D-G. We post a lot of great free information on a daily basis, uh, signals that we're currently in anywhere in the stock market, the Forex currency pairs, as well as uh, the E-minis. So there's a lot of great free information. Feel free to, to join us. Uh, just a couple of days ago, we posted a sell signal in the Australian dollar, and that has uh, roughly gained over 100 pips as, at this point in just a couple of days. That's, that's roughly about $1,000 per contract. So uh, feel free to follow us once again on Twitter. Now before we begin I just want to go over a little background and philosophy about specialist trading. As I stated we are first and foremost an educational company. It's our belief at specialist trading that the reason why most traders ultimately fail, it's been estimated somewhere about 80 or 85 percent of all traders fail, is because they're relying or depending on faulty information. For some reason we've been taught or sold a conventional wisdom, things that are supposed to work and we see that over time they really don't. And I say this from first-hand experience because I know a lot of people find this hard to believe, but the first year or two as a specialist on the trading floor, I had a terrible time. I could not make a dime. It was because I was relying on these things that were supposed to work. I had gone to all the seminars. I read all the books. At that time, we did not have uh, trading rooms or chat rooms, but we had uh, subscription services that we all subscribed to. And I, you know, I thought this was supposed to make you successful in trading. And I would have three or four great trades, and then the fifth trade, I'd give everything back. So there's really no consistency in my trading. Finally, my mentors on the floor, who were specialists who had been trading for roughly 30 or 40 years, were able to turn my way of thinking around, which ultimately got me on that road to consistency. And they really got me to stop relying on, you know, faulty information and faulty, uh, you know, learning techniques that really had no substance to them. So that's what our goal is. We want to provide you with information and tools and techniques that have stood the test of time so that ultimately you can empower yourself with this information and we can help you put together some type of trading plan. And then you can just basically rely on your own trading style, your own trading plan and get on that road to consistency. So even though we provide our students and our members with strategy uh, entries, exits and stops and signals, we are more about teaching you, not trading for you, but teaching you how to trade with the specialist edge. We just don't want you to blindly take signals without knowing why or what the reason is behind it. That's what so many websites do these days and that's why students and traders are failing. We want you to learn this so that you can ultimately just go on your own. So that's my goal, not to trade for you, but to teach you how to trade with a specialist edge. It's the same edge that was taught to me that was able to turn my trading around, so now I've been able to trade nearly 40 years. Okay, now before we begin, as uh, always, I also want to say I love taking questions. I know a lot of you will have a bunch of questions as I show you this entry technique today, but please try to hold off to the very end. Uh, I'll... Uh, take any question that you may have at the very end of today's presentation. So if you have one, just kindly remember it or write it down and I promise I'll get to it then, okay? So uh, 
wait till the very end to ask questions and I'm going to show you a lot of charts and a lot of examples and many times your question will be answered on the next slide. All right, so why don't we begin? I'm going to start out by sharing with you and how most people trade tops and bottoms. Once again, and the reason I say this is because this is the way I used to trade when I first was on the floor. I had always been told, you know, the best and fastest way to make money and quickest way is to pick tops and bottoms. And once you get the right information, it's really easy. So I'm going to start out by sharing with you some older charts so that you can see exactly, uh, you know, what works and what doesn't work. And then we'll share with you some recent charts as early as, or as recent, I should say, as today. All right, let's start out with stocks. And let's start out with this first example in Caterpillar Tractor. All right, as we see here, this is an older chart of Cat Tractor. And in order to trade tops or bottoms, you usually need some type of tool, an indicator, or something that tells you when something is overbought or oversold. Now, all I have plotted here in the bottom of this screen is your standard stochastic oscillator. There's nothing that has been edited or altered. It's just your basic charting platform so, uh, software that just says stochastic on it, okay? I don't even know the parameters of this. I just clicked on stochastic oscillator. And all we really care about is that there is, once again, some type of so-called oversold area, as we see here below the threshold. And then once we get above this top blue line threshold, we're in the so-called overbought territory. So conventional wisdom teaches us that when we get in the oversold area and uh, when these lines cross, that's your buy signal. So that's when you're supposed to buy. So let's say you had purchased Cat Tractor roughly around here. And then you simply hold on to your long until you get into the so-called overbought area and the lines cross again. So now you sell your, your uh, long position. And now you want to go, if you are an aggressive trader, now you go short. So you're short in this trade and it's working out very nicely. You see here now that you're back in the oversold territory, the lines cross, so you cover your short and you go long. Now at this rate, you think you're going to be a millionaire by the end of the year because everything is working fantastic and, and you just can't believe how easy this is. So you buy, you cover your short, you go long Caterpillar Tractor again, and this time it doesn't go up. But that's okay, the, the overbought, oversold tool is still in the oversold area and the lines are crossing again, so why don't you double up? After all, you made some good money on the first couple of trades, so at this point you don't need the, the stock to rise that high in order to make your money back. So you double up your position and it goes up a little bit, but then it goes lower. So you decide to buy some more, you triple up, and at this point it continues to go lower and lower until ultimately you've given everything that you made back on the first two trades and now you're in the loss column. All right, does this look familiar to anyone? And this same phenomenon just doesn't work on stocks. Let's see if we transfer this over to the E-mini S&P. Here's a, a five minute chart of the E-mini. Same oscillator is plotted. We just clicked on oscillator, the standard oscillator. You can use anything else. It doesn't matter if it's stochastic. It could be another momentum tool. It could be uh, something that you've devised or it can even be based off of uh, the full moon. It doesn't matter as long as it tells you if whatever you're trading is in so-called overbought, oversold conditions. Now in this particular five minute chart, we see here that we have a sell point because we're in the so-called overbought territory, the lines cross, so you go short. Now we're short until we get into the so-called oversold area, so we cover our short, and we go long, and you figure, boy, this is easy, I'll just do this all day long, and you go short again, you sell your long position, and you have a really nice profit. You have a couple of good trades under your belt here in the beginning of the day, so you feel really happy about yourself. You go short, and it doesn't go down this time, so you decide to double up, and now you triple up, and now once again, you've given everything back you made on the trades that worked out because the last three just continued to go against you. How about Forex traders, okay? The same phenomenon just does not work in stocks or in the E-mini. We can see it in the Forex as well. Here's an older chart of the Swiss franc. We have the same oscillator plotted. As you can see, we're in the overbought territory, so you decide to sell, all right? You're all excited. You feel this is going to really work out well. You go short. Nothing really happens yet, and actually it goes even higher, but you get another sell signal. You decide to double up on the Swiss franc. And then you triple up, and once again, you have absolutely nothing left in your account because you've been blown out. Now, I'm showing you this because this is the way 99.9% .9 of most traders trade. They use some type of tool that tells them we are overbought or oversold. Once again, I know from firsthand experience because this is the way I used to trade. You see, it's similar to a gambling mentality, whereas if you're in front of the slot machines. 
if you ever played the slot machines, they give you this false sense of security that you think you're winning because every once in a while you get a little winner and you'll hear the bells and whistles go off and you think that you're doing all right. But if you stay there long enough, over time you're going to wind up losing and you really have nothing to show for all your hard work because the odds are against you right off the bat. It's a loser's game. It's a recipe for disaster. So this is the way I used to trade. And once again, I would have three or four great trades. And then the fifth trade, I'd give everything back. So at the end of a couple of years, I had nothing to show for all my hard work and all my studying and research. And all the things I had been taught that were supposed to work for me weren't working. And I'm sure a lot of you are probably going through the same environment right now. It's very discouraging and very frustrating. And, it's, and you're worried whether you're going to be trading much longer. Well. Once again, I said my mentors saw how frustrated I was and came and got me and said, Steve, what you have to learn is this mindset. And that is there is no such thing as overbought, oversold. If you want to become successful, that's one of the first things you have to learn. And you really have to believe it. There is no such thing as overbought or oversold. See, we've been sold that any issue or anything we trade gets to overbought territory, should be sold, gets to oversold, and should be bought. But what my mentors taught me is they said, Steve, any, anything you trade can go as high as it wants to. You've seen things stay overbought for weeks, if not months. And anything that you trade can go as low as you want. It can go down to zero. We've seen equities that have gone down to zero that have been bankrupt. So there's no such thing as overbought, oversold. It's a recipe for disaster. So why even get involved in trading this way? Ultimately, it's not going to be consistent. It won't be successful. Remember, we're searching for consistency. We're not trying to hit home runs. We're just trying to mentor all of our students so that they can be consistent and be able to trade and sustain themselves for 20, 30, or 40 years. So finally, I got this mindset in, you know, in my mind, and I said, okay, there's no such thing as overbought, oversold. So how do I trade tops and bottoms then? And they said the correct way to trade tops and bottoms is simply to go with them. So what does that mean? Well, this is the technique that they shared with me, and this is what I'm going to share with you today. But before we get into it, I just want to reiterate, because this is probably going to be my number one question when we, in about 15 minutes when we go to question and answer period. This is a entry technique only. In other words, in order to have a full-fledged strategy, you need a number of pieces of the puzzle. You need to know where to place your stop. You need to know where to exit. You need to know about money management. This is not a strategy. It's just an entry technique, but a great entry technique that you can apply to just about any strategy you currently use if you're trying to trade tops and bottoms. So once again, I know a lot of you will wonder at the end, your eyes will be wide open thinking, boy, this is great. Where do I place my stop? Where do I exit? Those are only questions you can ask for a trading strategy. What I'm about to share with you is just a piece of the puzzle of a trading strategy it is just an entry technique. All right, so let's look at that uh, scenario once again in Caterpillar Tractor. We have the full chart here. We have the same oscillator plotted, the stochastic oscillator. And here's what my mentors taught me. They said, Steve, before you do anything, before you pull the trigger, before you get a setup, the first thing you must do is plot a 50 period simple moving average. Right? That's the first thing. And it doesn't matter if you're intraday trading. It doesn't matter if you're an investor. The first thing you must do is ask yourself, where is price in relation to the 50 period moving average? Okay, I'm going to say that again. You may want to write that down. This is how important this concept is. Where is price in relation to the 50 period simple moving average? Now, in this scenario, it's below. Therefore, if price is below the way it is right here, you will only look for shorting setups. It does not mean that you'll short the minute price goes below the 50. It doesn't mean you sell the market. It just means that if price is below, well, then we're just looking to go short. We need to apply some strategy. It can be one of mine. It could be one of yours. But you're only going to use a shorting strategy. Now, conversely, if price were above, We'd only be looking for long setups. We'd only apply a buy strategy. But you're never going to try and go long if price is below the 50 period the way it is right here. Perfect example, I saw someone in the question and answer box talking about Netflix Okay, today. The only way you would get hurt with Netflix if you're trying to buy it. Look at Netflix and see where price was in relation to the 50 period. If Netflix was below, which I think it is, then you should only be looking at it from a short point of view. There's no way you'd get hurt being long. So it's the same way with 
E-minis, with Forex, whatever you're trading, if it's a five-minute chart or a weekly chart. If price is below, we're looking for short setups. We're only looking to go short. If price is above, we're looking to go long. Whereas in this scenario, we're looking to go short, so how do we how do we apply this? Well, we look at the tool, the stochastic oscillator, and remember, it could be virtually any tool you're using, and we want to look at those so-called oversold areas, circled in red here. All right. So we see where those so-called oversold areas are, and now we want to identify all of the short-term lows that were created when we were in the so-called oversold area. You see those red horizontal lines? Those were all when little short-term bottoms or pivot points were made when we were below that, uh, I believe it's a 20 threshold, okay? Remember, you can apply this to any tool you have, but as long as you're in the oversold area, you want to see where the little bottom was made. And we're going to exploit those because the minute those lows are violated by one to three ticks, we're going short. We're going to sell. We're going to enter at the market. Remember, this is just an entry technique I'm sharing with you. And now, whereas you would have lost a lot of money trying to pick a bottom in Caterpillar Tractor, look how you would have had nothing but winning trades going short Caterpillar Tractor. See how simple this is. Why? Because you applied the 50 period simple moving average and you use this technique which is exploiting the so-called oversold area because remember there is no such thing as oversold. How about the E-mini chart? Okay, five minute chart of E-mini. We're going a different time frame, a different market. The first thing we do is we apply the 50 period moving average. We ask ourselves where is price in relation to the 50 period moving average. Price is above. So what does this mean? Are we going to short the E-mini? No, we won't even consider shorting it. All we're going to do is look for buy setups. That's it. Now if we're using this entry technique, if we're going long, we want to locate the so-called overbought territories this time. And we're going to exploit them. All right, circled in green here on the oscillator. And so we want to identify every time a short-term top was created in that so-called overbought territory. Because since we know there's no such thing as overbought, that things will go as high as they want to, we're going to exploit that. If we trade one to three ticks above, that's our entry point. So as before, when we had maybe one or two good trades in the E-mini, and then we got you know killed because it kept going higher and higher, and we kept trying to short, now all we're trying to do is be in sync with the E-mini. As it goes higher, we just simply jump on board and buy more. Lastly, let's look at the Swiss franc, okay? First thing we do with any scenario, it doesn't even matter if you're using this technique. It could be a strategy that you feel comfortable with. That's fine. Always apply the 50 period moving average and always ask yourself before you buy or sell, where is price in relation to the 50 period moving average? Now price is above here, so what does that mean? It means we're only looking to go long the Swiss franc. We are not going to use a selling or shorting strategy. We're only going to be applying a buy strategy. Do you see how right off the bat you have this higher level of consistency just by using this simple technique? This is not something you have to purchase. This is not some special uh, systematic tool or anything. This is on every charting software. So since we're going long, we want to locate all of the so-called overbought territory, as we see here, because we're going to exploit that. And once we found that, then we simply identify the tops, the short-term tops that were created in the so-called overbought environment. And once we trade one to three pips above, we simply buy. Now before we tried to short the Swiss franc going all the way up and we probably would have gotten blown out of our account. But now we have nothing but buy signals and we're in sync with the trade and we have made a nice, uh, you know, a nice uh, amount of great trades, successful trades in the last month or two. Okay, so that's the concept. Let's show you some more current examples and let's show you some uh, uh, different ways in which to apply them. Those uh, examples were for educational purposes. Let's show you how it works in the real world and some examples from this last couple of months and as recent as even as today. Let's look at stocks for all you stock traders out there. All right, the first uh, issue we're looking at is Amgen, and this is a, a current chart coming up all the way into the first week of November, okay? So this is a, a current chart, and as you can see here, we are, for some uh, portion, above the 50. We go below a little bit, but then we resume back up above the 50. So we kind of want to look at overbought and oversold conditions.
As we look at the next chart, we see here that here are the so-called overbought conditions. We're using the same stochastic oscillator once again, but remember, it doesn't matter what we're using. We could use another momentum tool. We could use something that you had devised. It could even be a newsletter where someone tells you this stock or this market is overbought or oversold. Okay, so now we want to just exploit all the short-term tops and the bottoms that were created in the overbought and oversold areas. Now we see here that we have a short-term bottom created when we were in the oversold area. In order to go short, we would have to trade one to five ticks below that. So we never did, so there was no trade generated here. But we could have used all these to go long. And you see how trading Amgen all the way since August, all the way up into November, would have been a nice trade. You could have taken the first trade roughly around 135 and ridden it all the way up about 20 points or so. How about Apache Corp? Okay, APA. First thing we ask ourselves is where is price in relation to the 50? Well, obviously in September we had uh, three or four consecutive closes below the 50. So now we know that we're only going to be going short. We're not even going to try and pick a bottom. It's, it's silly to try and buck the trend. If the overall trend is down, we're just going with it. So since we want to apply this technique, we locate the so-called oversold areas. And we, since we know there's no such thing as oversold, we want to identify the short-term bottoms that were created in that oversold area. And as you see here, as we were going lower and lower, there were no bottoms there, no pivot lows. But we had two nice ones way up here, roughly around 90, about 20 points higher. So as you can see, all we had to do was get short roughly about 90, 92, and rode it all the way down to roughly 67, 68. See how simple that is. The only way you would have lost money is by trying to pick a bottom in Apache. How about if we look at Avalon Bay here? This is an older chart coming into September. Obviously, we are above the 50 period. So what does this mean? It means we're only going to be going long. Now, sure, there are a couple of instances here where if you would have gone short here or possibly here, you could have had some nice quick trades, but you would have been having to have been very diligent and been right on top of the trade and in and out in a couple of days. It's much easier just to locate the overbought condition, be in sync with the 50 period simple moving average, identify the short term tops, and then just jump on board. It's so much more relaxing, so much more easy way to trade when you're in sync as opposed to trying to pick tops and bottoms the way conventional wisdom tells us to. And then uh, finally we look at ABX, Barrett Gold. We see here that in September we had consecutive closes below the 50 period moving average right here. So this means we're looking only on the short side of Barrett Gold. This was all the way back in September. I know a lot of people were saying, boy, uh, it's amazing how low gold just kept falling. Well, we know, we knew all the way back in August that uh, gold was below uh, roughly the 50 period moving average. So there's no reason why to even try to pick a bottom in, in any type of gold issue. So since we know that we're on the short side, we locate the so-called oversold areas. We identify the short-term bottoms that were created while we were in the so-called oversold area. And we just sell each time one of those short-term bottoms was violated. Extremely, extremely simple. Why? Because you're in sync with the market. Now here's a way how you can just follow the market whichever way it goes. Here's an older chart of Halliburton coming all the way into October from February all the way to October. The first portion of this chart, we were above the 50. So that meant we were only looking to go long. But then later on in August, we had consecutive closes below the 50. So then we changed our overall trend and now we're looking only to go short. So while we were long, we were exploiting the so-called oversold areas in green. While we were short, we're looking for the so-called oversold areas in red. Here are the tops and bottoms that were created. And you simply just buy when it trades one to three ticks above and go short when it trades one to three ticks below. And you see how uh, even though the shorts didn't take off right off the bat, later on into October, we had a really nice sell-off. No need to look at news. No need to look at earnings. No need to, you know, have all these chat rooms or trading rooms that, you know, everything is right in front of you. The chart is right in front of you. You save a lot of money trading this way rather than spending all that hard-earned time and money. Remember, my mentors taught me to keep your trading as simple as possible. All right, let's look at the E-mini now, some uh, recent charts in the E-mini. We'll first start out with going back roughly to 2012, about three years, looking at the E-mini on a weekly time frame. Now these are all weekly bars. Now if you ask yourselves where is price in relation to the 50, 
since 2012, we've been above. So all the way up, up until now, this past week, we are only looking to go long the E-mini if we're trading more of a midterm range type of uh, uh, markets, uh, uh, you know, environment. That's all we're interested in. If we are looking at weekly charts, we've only been long the E-mini. So that means we look at the so-called overbought areas. We identify the tops. And then we simply buy when those tops are broken to the upside. See how simple that is. There's no reason you would have tried to even go short the E-mini this past two or three years. We can go down to a smaller time frame about a month ago. This is an hourly time frame in the same market, the E-mini. We went uh, roughly about the 9th or 10th of October. We went below the 50 period moving average, well over here. So this means we're only looking to go short, and this was on the uh, overnight session. Okay, so since we're only looking to go short because we're below the 50, that means we are exploiting these so-called oversold areas. Once we've located them, we look and identify the short-term bottoms. And I know it doesn't look like a lot, but if you've gotten short and taken the first signal, that's roughly like 1915. We're talking about a good, uh, a good 50 points or so to the downside in just about three or four days. That's how easy this technique could have uh, generated some nice gains for you. Now, this was on an hourly chart about a month ago. Let's look at a five-minute chart just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, for all intents and purposes, in this five-minute chart, we're above the 50-period moving average. So we're looking for so-called over, overbought areas. We identify the tops, and you simply buy when those tops are violated. Okay? So you could have roughly have taken the first signal of about 1969. Uh, you could have made a good 15, 20 points in just roughly about an hour or so. How about a one-minute chart? Okay, this was just this past week, a one-minute chart. We are below the 50-period moving average, so this means we're only looking to go short. See how simple it is? We identify the so-called oversold areas, and then we simply uh, sell the E-mini once we trade one or two ticks below. Now, let me show you what happened today. This was roughly about 8 o'clock Pacific time, uh, up until about two or three hours ago. Uh, as you can see here, 8 o'clock today, we went above the 50-period moving average on a tick bar. So I've just shown you all these different time frames. You can get a lot of signals if you go down to tick bar charts if you're intraday trading. So roughly around 8, 8, 10, we had consecutive closes above the 50. So this means we're only looking to go long. And you could have identified all these so-called overbought territories and simply looked for the short-term tops and... You could have made a good five or six points just being long the E-mini from 8 o'clock Pacific time up until about 11 o'clock, three hours. You know, And that's roughly about, uh, if we're talking, if you would have taken the first signal at 2042, I mean, we're talking about a good uh, six or eight points roughly. That's uh, three to $400 per contract and for about a couple hours' work. And lastly, let's look at the Forex markets where you see a lot of these trends and so you can exploit a lot of these so-called conditions. Here's the Euro Yen, which has been going straight up into, uh, as we see this older chart, uh, this is a weekly chart. So we're only looking at the long side. Since we have the so-called overbought territories, we try to locate and identify the tops that were created and we simply buy. Now, I know it doesn't look like a lot, but as you take in this first signal, we're talking about thousands of pips. We're talking about over thousands of dollars just per contract. And then we can go to a daily chart of the euro dollar. As we see here, the euro dollar has literally been going lower and lower and lower. The only way you would have lost money trading the euro dollar is from the long side. Because if you tried to sustain a long position, you ultimately would have given everything back and you would have lost a lot of money. Why not just use the simple tool, the 50 period moving average, and go short. Go with it. If we're below the 50, you're only looking to go short. You will never be long until we have three to five closes above the 50. So since we're going short the euro, we locate the so-called oversold areas. Once we found those, we identify a bottom that was created, a short-term bottom, and then we simply sell. So now, do you see how simple it is when you are in sync with the market as opposed to trying to fight it? So, before we go into question and answers, there's two very important points to remember. Remember, the first thing that my mentors taught me, when they saw how much I was struggling, I was the type of guy, if you just remember that last chart, I was the type of guy trying to pick a bottom in the euro dollar. Or I was the type of guy that, if we looked at those weekly charts of the E-mini, I was trying to pick a top. My mentors said, Steve, 
Never ever try to pick tops and bottoms. Why? Because it's a loser's game. It's a recipe for disaster. You'll have maybe seven, eight, maybe you'll even have nine trades in a row where you'll do amazingly. You'll do fantastic. But it's always that tenth trade where you give everything back. So where's the consistency in that? Remember, we want to teach and mentor our students so that they can be trading 20, 30, 40 years down the road. It doesn't pay to teach them techniques that have no consistency involved in them. Because you may do well for a month, uh, maybe even a year or two. But if you give everything back, what, what was it worth? So we want you to be able to just slowly have this two step forward, back step, and one step back approach. So the way you get that is by first realizing that you should never ever try to pick tops and bottoms. And why? because there's no such thing as overbought or oversold. I just shared with you numerous charts, everything from stocks to the mini to the forex markets, and different time frames, everything from weekly to daily to five minute to tick charts, where I showed you there is no such thing as overbought or oversold. Uh, issues, equities, futures can go as high as they want or as low as they want. So, you know, it's much easier to be in tune with the market as opposed to trying to rely on uh, overbought or oversold conditions where there really is no validity to them. Okay, so in closing here, before we go to questions and answers, I want you to ask yourself this first question. Do you think this edge could have helped your trading this past year? Remember, this edge is simply an entry technique. I know a lot of you are going to say, well, where would I place a stop? Well, I noticed that some of them went the other way once I would have gotten in, or where would I exit? Boy, I had some great profits there. This was simply an edge that you can apply to any trading method you currently have. But let's talk about the other edge, the 50 period moving average. Do you think that could have helped your trading this past year? I mean, go back and look at your last 10, 20 trades. I can almost guarantee that the reason why you have losing trades is because you are out of sync with that simple tool, the 50 period moving average. Remember, if price is below the 50, you're only looking to go short. I don't care what someone says on TV, some trading guru, or someone says in a chat room, if price is below, you're not going to buy anything. And I don't care if they say to, to sell something, if price is above, you're not. You're only going to be looking for buy setups, okay? So ask yourself, do you think one of these tools could have helped your trading this past year? Well, what if I could offer you uh, two or three more tools just like this that had just as much importance and were just as powerful but totally different? What if I could offer you five, six, seven, maybe even eight more of these? Well, if I could just take a few seconds to talk about our special offer for all the attendees today, that's our Secrets of a Stock Exchange Specialist training session. This is a three-hour video of trading techniques. I was asked to speak at a seminar in Denver a few years ago, and they recorded the, the uh, high-quality recording of the seminar. Now, people paid uh, hundreds of dollars to come see me speak, and I spoke for three hours, and I gave them many more high-probability trading edges such as you saw today. I told them which indicators to use, which ones not to use. I went into detail about the difference between a system versus a strategy. I share with you in my uh, experience what the number one chart pattern is that you should always be looking for in any strategy. And then I think the most important thing on this three hour video is that I gave them the complete rules to probably one of our best and most consistent pullback strategies, that's strategy number one. Now if you recall, I just shared with you an entry technique. But strategy number one is a full-fledged strategy. I gave the entries, the exits, the stop placement, money management, all included in this particular video. In fact, let me share with you some recent strategy number one uh, signals that were generated. If we look at ROST, raw stores, we see here that starting at the end of September up until a month ago, we had really nice buy signals going all the way up. Each time we had a little sell-off or pullback, Strategy number one generated a buy signal. So you had these really nice buy signals generated on the lows. Now remember, I just stated you should never try to pick a bottom or pick a top. The beauty of strategy number one is that it finds out and discerns what the overall trend is, and then it picks bottoms or pullbacks that are in sync with the trend. So it might look like we're picking bottoms here, but we're really not. We're in sync with the overall trend. Now here's a sell signal and fasten all. As you can see here, we are below the 50, or I, uh, sorry, we don't have the 50 period. Just a second here. I seem to have uh, some noise coming in. If you can help me all right, it seems like someone else's mic may be coming in through there. If there is sound coming through, I apologize for that. Uh, it appears that someone else's mic may be on, so if you could mute that or 
bite that down. I'm starting to get that, that feedback a little bit. But if you can hear me all right, I just want to share with you this signal on the 6. Uh, it doesn't look as if we are in a downtrend, but according to the strategy, we're in an overall downtrend. So all you have to do is simply follow the rules of the strategy, generate a sell signal, and look what happened. We had a nice move. Okay, thank you. I, I, whatever happened, the uh, sound stopped there, so I hope you can still hear me. Uh, great. Let's look at another signal here. Now, this was in Netflix. Now, according to the strategy, the strategy generated a sell signal. In fact, two sell signals. Even though it looked as if we were going in a sideways range, we had a sell signal generated on the 7th and another one generated on the 9th. Now, later on, Coming into uh, the end of October, beginning of November, uh, there was some, probably some news or something happened where the stock uh, really had a, a nice gap to the downside. Probably some news or something that uh, affiliated with the stock. You know, we don't really look at news. We don't care about news because everything we see is in the price. So it wasn't as if someone told us a week or so before uh, they called us up from the company and said, tell all your students and members to go short Netflix. The price and strategy number one told us that we should be looking to go short. So this is what the beauty is of our strategies. We're always in sync with the overall trend, and then we just try to either sell uh, or buy in sync with that trend. Now, obviously, the overall trend in Netflix was down, so there was no reason for us even worrying about buying Netflix. All we're concerned about is being short Netflix. That way, if it, even if it does have wild swings, we're in sync with the overall trend. Another signal here that was generating the E-minis. If you look once again at weekly charts going back to 2012, look at all these buy signals that were generated as we had these small pullbacks. Now, nothing has been altered or edited because we're using the strategy for a different market or time frame. We use the same rules regardless of market or time frame. Here's E-minis again, just going back last month on a five-minute time frame. Look at all these nice little bounces, intraday bounces, and strategy number one generated sell signals. And then finally, the same rules apply if we're looking at the Canadian dollar, Forex currency pairs. These were all buy signals in September all the way up to the end of October, telling you to go long the Canadian dollar. So once again, in this three-hour training session, we give you all the complete rules so that you know exactly where to place your entry, where to place your stops, and where to exit the trade. So this is all included along with many more high probability trading edges. Now, this is a wealth of information. If you like what I gave you today, well, it's about uh, 10 times more what I gave you today, three hours worth in front of a large group in uh, Denver, Colorado. Three hours of trading techni techniques plus a full-fledged strategy. Now, what we have done uh, with this, when we marketed this on our sister site, Pro Trader Strategies, we have sold this three-hour uh, seminar for roughly close to $1,000. But for all the attendees today, we are dropping that price down to $37. And one of the best things is, is that it's yours to keep. This is not something that is only good for a couple of weeks and then it expires or dissolves. This is an online video course, so it's yours to, to keep. It's a, you, you can simply uh, uh, you have the link and watch it whenever you like. $37 for all this information plus a full-fledged strategy that I just showed you a number of signals that were recently generated in. All of this is for your, for, for your uh, education and hopefully to get you on board to being a more consistent trader. So if you are interested in taking advantage of that, $37, I'm sure many of you spent more than that trading the market today. Here's the information. You can go to our sister site, which is Pro Trader Strategies. They market and promote all of my courses and all of my strategies. You can contact any one of their trading consultants at trading at protraderstrategies.com. Simply email them or call them directly at area code 310-598-6677. Now, the link right below the phone number is what you need to cut and paste onto your browser so that you can take advantage of that $37 deal. But I also believe if you look in your chat box to the right, you'll see that it's been posted there for the special promo. All you have to do is click that on It'll take you directly to the page, and you can be up and running in just a, a matter of moments. So once again, $37 for something that is sold on our website for close to $1,000. This is for a limited time only. Once again, we are offering this because of our affiliation, our new affiliation with OptionFit, and so we're, we're very happy to, to have uh, some type of co uh, cooperation with them. And so please take advantage of that. If you're interested in taking your trading to the next level, there's tr tremendous great information as well as a full-fledged strategy for you to take advantage of. 
Okay, thank you all for waiting. I'm going to open up the question and answer box and uh, answer any questions that you may have. And I want to thank you once again for waiting there. Uh, let's see. Um, Anna asks, are options covered? Hi, Anna. Well, we're not an option class per se, but Anna, we have a lot of traders and members at Specialist Trading who just trade options. And what they do is they just simply transfer the signals that are generated, and instead of actually buying the stock or the currency pair or the e-mini futures contract, they simply buy a long call or a long put, and that's it. Because these strategies work well and there's a, a level of consistency, they just transfer them over to buying the calls or the puts. Now you can also, I'm sure they probably also do some type of uh, uh, spreads or uh, something, but we're not an option class, so we don't really teach that. But we have, once again, a number of option traders who just simply transfer the signals over, and they're, they're very happy with that, okay? Also, another, uh, another thing is that uh, because of the um, uh, of uh, time decay, a lot of option traders like to look at weekly charts for the signal so they can get a larger move, more bang for their buck with the options. So as opposed to looking at daily charts, they'll look at weekly charts. You'll still get signals generated using our strategies, and they simply buy uh, longer uh, out-of-the-money puts or calls to lock in those large gains, okay? So I hope that answers your question, Anna. Uh, Rita says, thank you very much for this informative, much appreciated, well presented. Oh, you're more than welcome, Rita. Uh, Rhea, I'm sorry. And I hope you take advantage or have already taken advantage of that special offer. Remember, $37. I'm sure many of you trading today probably spent more than that. So that's a very inexpensive price for all the information included in that uh, training session. Uh, John asks, uh, Steve, do you uh, even need the stochastic indicator? Can't you just eyeball the swing highs and lows on the price charts? That's a good question, John. Yes, it's probably a little bit more advanced way to do that, but we realize that many you know, uh, traders have never used this technique before, and maybe they don't have a lot of experience. And remember, we're trying to exploit conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom will always tell you things are overbought or over, things are oversold. Turn on the TV after every market and someone will tell you, well, we're, uh, this stock or this issue is currently overbought or currently oversold. There's no such thing. So when they see that it didn't work out, they're going to rush to the hills to try and get out of the trade or, or get out of their position, and we just want to exploit that. So for traders who don't have a lot of experience seeing that, it makes it easier to apply some type of overbought, oversold tool. Now, if you can just eyeball that and see that for yourself, that's great. But some traders don't have that uh, experience in doing that. So just simply add any tool. I don't care what it is. I just picked your standard stochastic oscillator. Pick anything that generates an overbought and oversold condition. doesn't matter what it is. And we want to exploit that, okay? Uh, uh, Judy asks about options. But yes, it does work with options. You just simply transfer over the signals, okay? Uh, Let's see, Greg says, uh, is the signal generated when stochastic crosses above 80 or below 20? Do you need two stochastics or, and what are their speeds? Okay, Greg, uh, once again, whatever charting platform you're using, just click on stochastic oscillator, okay? That's all we're in, concerned about. I don't, I don't even know what the, uh, the uh, actual uh, priorities are of the actual stochastics. And then I believe, yes, the overbought threshold was 80 and the oversold is 20. All you want to know is once you get above those levels, look for, now go to the stock or the issue or the equity or the uh, currency pair or future that you're trading and look for a short-term top to be created because we want to exploit that if we trade above it. If we go below 20, which is the oversold condition, well, once we're there, then go back and look and eyeball the issue that you're trading, and we're looking for a short-term bottom to be created. It's that simple. We're just going to exploit those tops and bottoms that were created in so-called overbought and oversold conditions. Okay? Uh, Judy asks, is this being recorded? Yes, it is. We record all of our presentations, and uh, if you want, if you aren't able to stay for the entire question and answer period, you have to leave early, uh, you can request a link to this. But remember, the uh, Special $37 offer is not lasting, lasting for a long time, so we really suggest taking advantage of that. It's only going to be around for a day or so. Uh, Doug asks, what time period would you start with the 50-period smooth uh, uh, moving average? Six months or one year? That's a good question, Doug. Uh, you know, the charts I look at usually have maybe only uh, uh, 
uh, I would say, uh, 60 to 90 uh, bars charts plotted. So I would just say maybe six months. That's fine. You don't have to really go back that far. Just as long as you, you know, create the 50 period simple moving average. But that's it. And remember, the concept of a 50 period is simply to get you on the right side of the market. Just because price crosses above the 50 and closes there one day, it does not mean this is a strategy or a system where you buy at the market. It just means that now we're going to start to look for some structure on the buy side. And that's what we teach and give to all of our students. We give structure and we give setups to go long or to go short. But we have to see where we are, first of all, in relation to the 50 period. Just because price goes below the 50 doesn't mean we're going to sell at the market. This is not a system. It's not a trading technique. It's simply a great tool to get you on the right side of the market. If there were only one tool, if I were stranded on a desert island and there were only one tool I could use, this would be the tool, the 50 period moving average. Because it has helped me be in sync with the market and, and be more consistent in my trading more than anything else. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's your edge we give you for free. And remember, in that $37 uh, training session, I give you about five to eight more edges just like that, but totally different that can improve your trading. So it, it's a great uh, informational uh, piece there. Uh, Jerry asks, so are these DVD or online? Uh, Jerry, they're online courses. So we simply provide you with the link, the page, and you can watch them anytime you want. Okay, It's not nothing that has to be sent to you. It's just an online course. Very simple. Uh, uh, Wayne says, specialists are the high priests of trading. Excellent. Uh, thanks. <laughs> You're very welcome, Wayne. Well, that's not true. We're not the high priests because... As I stated, for my first year or two, I couldn't make a dime. And plus, I knew a lot of specialists who made hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars over the course of their career, and most of them aren't trading anymore because they've given it all back. So there's only been a select few that have been able to keep it, and these are the, the secrets that were taught to me by my mentors. So most of the specialists were just glorified traders that were lucky enough to be on the floor, but once they had to leave or the exchange closed, they couldn't sustain that because they were relying too much on news or order flow. But once you leave the floor and you trade the way most of you probably are trading, just in front of a screen out of your home or personal office, it's much more difficult. So you have to rely on things that work. You have to rely on not on orders or not on some trading guru or not on news, but on the chart that's in front of you. Everything I share with you right now are things that I use in my daily trading. I don't look at news. I don't concern myself about earnings. I don't worry about what's going on in a trading room or a chat room. I only listen to the most important thing, and that's the market in front of me. Okay. Uh, Denny asks, are you on Twitter? Yes, I am. But remember, on Twitter, I post great information and a lot of learning things, but they're basically uh, just informational tools. And we don't give you live signals because that wouldn't be fair to the people who are members of Specialist Trading. But if you're interested, uh, yes, we are on Twitter. Our, our handle is at SPCLSTTRADG. Once again, write that down, that at SPCLST. T R A D G. That's our handle there. Okay. Uh, Brad says stocks would most likely be selected as slow or full, not fast. That's fine. I mean, feel free to experiment. Whatever works best for you. There's no right or wrong here. In fact, we tell all of our students, listen, everyone has a different uh, capacity for trading. Everyone uh, you know, doesn't trade the same. Some people are more aggressive, some people are faster, some people are slower. This means these are the different types of tools you may be using. We realize that te the technique I share with you today, a lot of people will say, well, it's a great technique, but it's not my style. That's fine. We want to give you things that you feel comfortable with it because our philosophy is that's what's going to make you consistent. When you feel comfortable with an approach, you will be consistent. Now, the good news is we have tons of approaches at Specialist Trading. We have upwards of 10 different strategies in all the different markets. So I'm sure there's one in there that's, that's going to make you feel comfortable. But we also mentor you as well. Um, Don asks, how long before we receive your training video? Well, Don, uh, you should be receiving it as early as uh, the next five or ten minutes. Once you go to that link, uh, as you see there at the very bottom of your page or on the right-hand corner, it's, it's under the chat box. You simply click that on, sign on, and you should have the uh, link to the video 
in just a matter of moments. So uh, that you can start watching the video where I spoke in front of people in about five or ten minutes. Remember, if I want you to ask yourselves once again, if tr if trading for the last year, 2014, didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, if you had a lot of high hopes that were never realized this year, it's time to get on board with something that works, sound, uh, conventional wisdom that you know that. Uh, has stood the test of time and that's what we teach in trade we're not going to promise you that you're going to be become a millionaire or make thousands of percent the way a lot of educational uh, websites do we're only going to say that we want to instill consistency in your new trading and it's our opinion that consistency is the real definition of success because consistency will have you trading 20 30 40 years down the road anyone can make tons of money hundreds of thousands of dollars and then lose it so where was the success there but success is longevity being able to come back and trade again so that's what we instill in all of our students and most of our students will stick around for two or three months and even though they're lifetime members they can come back whenever they want they pretty much go off on their own because now they're uh, sustainable now they can uh, trade on their own and they've, they've got a, a nice trading plan that they feel comfortable with so that's what we try to do with all of our members if you're interested in getting on board at a really great discounted deal take advantage of that $37 offer come on board and that's our way of getting to know you for our first presentation with you okay in closing here I want to thank you so much for attending today I hope you all take advantage of that special offer and I hope that you all hopefully become members of Specialist Trading and students of mine. I want to thank you so much for attending today, and I look forward to all of you becoming members of Specialist Trading, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.